What is up my thrifty friends? Tabs here from the Urban Goddess Shop. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video, we're going over sales for the last three weeks. I'm a little bit late. I tried to do it last week, didn't have time. So we're gonna do it this week. Sales have been good. They're increasing video after video. So yeah, lots of good stuff to share. Uh, we're gonna just do items that sold for over $40 just because I had over 90 items sold. So I gotta prioritize, you know, which ones we're covering. But yeah, I'm really excited to go over this with you guys. Lots of good information, lots of different items. I will say that, like Lululemon obviously is my top selling, but everything else is like, I don't know. It, it's just been, it's been good. So I've been diversifying. It's showing in my sales and I'm just excited to share this with you guys. Okay. Let's jump into our first items. We're going to go over my Canadian closet and then we'll go over the U S closet, lots of items on both of them. And then at the end of the video, we'll go over the analytics, average sale price, total sales, how many items, trends that I'm seeing, any insights that I have into these sales obviously will be shared throughout the video. Without further ado, let's jump into this. First off is an Aran Moore button front wool sweater. This was in a size medium and it sold for $83. I am always looking for Aran Moore, but here's the thing. You need to make sure that it is in good condition and it is not shrunken. I have found these before where the wool is felted. It looks like it fits a five-year-old. That is not sellable. <laughs> I would not be picking those up. So when you're grabbing them and you're looking at them, if it says a size medium, does this look like it would fit a size medium? If so, grab it because they hold good value. And on the Canadian side, actually, I'm going to say both my Canadian and my U.S. closet, I would list these around $100 um, depending on the color the pattern the condition <laughs> um but yeah these hold a really good value so fantastic sale to start this video next up is an avec le Feel mixed plaid double breasted blazer and this went to eco fashion freak for 50 dollars. thank you so much she saw it in my haul and was like oh my gosh i need this jacket it was so unique and it's an anthropology one i am actually finding this brand a little bit more often the pieces are always really really good quality she did leave me a love note tabs i love the jacket it's totally my style i will wear it tons this season thank you so much xo girl you are welcome it's a beautiful piece i'm so happy it went to you next up is a vintage ash creek pullover knit sweater size large this sold for 46 dollars I love coastal style sweaters. So knit style sweaters, I call them fisherman sweaters. I love them in neutral tones. I love textured, chunky knits, things like that. They seem to do well for me, especially this tone, like that yellowish tan, you know, off white color. It, it's like, this is one of the staples that I'm known for selling in my closet. So if I can find these regardless of the brand, if they are good quality sweater, I will be picking them up. Next up is a two-piece bundle, and this sold for $85. In it is a Lululemon Run Swiftly Tech half zip-up, size 10, and a pair of Lululemon Wild Twist 7 8 tight leggings. And those leggings were so cool. When I saw them, I was like instantly, yes, because number one, the colors. The colors are such fall tones. And then like the cool pattern. Also, they were a size 10, which is a great size to be finding in Lululemon if you are able to find the larger sizes. So fantastic bundle. This went to K Breezy 26. She's bought off me before. Thank you so much. She is like one of my ideal customers. I can almost pick out which items that you will like because I, I know your taste now and I feel like we have similar taste in clothing. Next up is an Outback Trading Company full zip uh, Sherpa type jacket. It was a size medium. This sold for $50. I shared this on my Instagram. It was so adorable. The colors, the Western, the Southwestern vibe on the back. It was like the silhouettes of the cowboys and their horses. And there was even like a little dog on it. It was so stinking cute. This actually went to one of my old co-workers from the hospital, Robin, and she like messaged me instantly and she's like, yes, I want to get this. And she does live outside of town. She loves horses. This is perfect for her. Robin, I don't know if you watch these videos, but I'm so happy it went to you. And I can't wait to see pictures on your socials of you wearing this jacket because it's just such a unique piece. I wish it would have fit me better. I really do. 
Next up is a free people. We are H A H. <laughs> um, and it was a, like a bodysuit kind of like lingerie type top extra small. This sold for $50. My net earnings were 40, but I'm going to be honest. I picked this up on whatnot. Someone had like a big liquidation palette they were going through. I did buy, I think a couple sizes of this, but yeah, I think I'm making maybe 20 bucks off them. I did get caught up doing some liquidation buying on whatnot, and I got lots of new Ateg's items. I just, uh, I just don't see, like, they, they usually don't sell very quickly for me. And I'll, like, get caught up in the moment, and I'll try and do some online shopping, and then I get all this stuff, and I'm like, why did I do this? <laughs> so it's nice to see when they trickle sell, but I have had this for probably two months listed, so not a quick sale for me. Next up is a pair of Wilfred tie front casual pants, size four. These sold for $76. Uh, the Wilfred tie front pants, I'm still picking up if I find them. I don't find them as often as I was last fall, but I do feel like they do really well. These are a tan color, coastal vibe, neutral, minimalist. Like I know that when I have these pants listed, they're going to sell. And usually I would say $65 to $85 is what I can get on this Canadian side. And probably going to be similar on the US side because Aritzia is one of those brands that doesn't change their currency between Canada and US. It's like Lululemon. They charge the same price on in both countries. So yeah, I, I do think those items would, would hold similar value on the US side. Next up is a Lululemon 2022 Ebb to Street long sleeve size 8. This sold for $54. I did take a little bit of a gamble on this. I paid about $20 for it. My net earnings on it are $39.27. So $20 profit is usually what I'm looking for. So the cost of goods minus Poshmark fees minus um, what I paid for the item. I'm trying to make $20 minimum an item. Anything more than that absolutely but twenty dollars is like my minimum if i'm making less than twenty dollars on an item i'm gonna reconsider if i pick it up next time because it's got to be worth the time and the effort and everything that goes into selling that item and that's just yeah that's the business model that i'm running so this was a good sale sold pretty quick too i will say i think why this one did so well it was 2022 i put that in the title it was also like a gray really nice neutral tone my ideal shoppers love neutral tones like they they love that minimalist and contemporary look not really into the flashy colors and the patterns not saying that those items can't sell but that is not my ideal customer in my closet next up is a lululemon swiftly tech long sleeve this was a size 12 sold for 42 dollars again i'm not always seeing the high sales in the older swiftly text that i used to now if this was a newer style like a even like a 2019 and newer i think it would have sold for over 50 dollars. but these older swiftly texts i just have to be more cautious when i'm picking them up because my local thrifts mark them the same price as the new ones but i'm not getting the value in the resale on them uh, next, we have a Free People Saturday Shacket, and this was in a size small, sold for $74. Really happy about that one. I came across it at Value Village, so I had a really good cost of goods on it. That was a good profit item. I want to say I made about $35 off of it, so I like to see those sales. Uh, Free People substantial pieces do really well. Um, I don't pick up like tank tops and like smaller pieces i would say when i'm picking up free people i'm really looking for long sleeve sweaters and jackets and i feel like i get the best dollar and dresses depending on the dress but i feel like i get the best value for those ones uh next we have a two-piece bundle and this one sold for 70 dollars. it's gonna fall a little bit below my 40 dollars per item but i really like this this bundle because it had two of my favorite brands to sell first was a nyx wing woman contour bra size four and a patagonia plaid button-up shirt in a size eight uh, i'm still looking for nyx bras i think the most that i would be paying for them would be like maybe $12 Canadian which is probably somewhere around like $8 US and for Patagonia button-up shirts same thing I'm not willing to spend more than $12 on these look like in Canadian dollars because they just don't hold the same value as like their cinchillas and their pullovers and their jackets and stuff right 
I feel like they usually sell and they'll hold like a decent value, but I'm not getting over $50 for those. And they don't retail for that much, right? So it's knowing what do these items retail for and what is their resale market value. Uh, next is a pair of Lululemon Keep Moving 7 8 pants. These were in a size 6. They sold for $60.00. These remind me of on the fly pants, like they're kind of like that ankle crop, tapered leg. I think those are still trending. I'm still looking for them personally. I feel like they're not doing as well on my US closet. My US closet, I would say, are the leggings and the studio pants, but on the Canadian side, these tapered leg pants seem to be doing good. And I think, I still think this, I think a lot of the tapered leg pants are going to people that are working in like a professional position um, a lot of healthcare workers wear them they're just comfortable they're versatile they look dressy and you can wear them with like a nice blouse tucked in I just think they're a really versatile pant so if you own one or two of these you're probably going to try and find a couple more colors of them next up is a pair of Berkman suede leather clogs these were in a size 10 and a half they sold for $40 Berkman is a new brand to me it is an orthopedic shoe they retail for quite a bit of money uh yeah I originally sourced these for myself but they were just too big I'm a nine and a half I was like maybe I can make them work no they were like sloppy on my feet I would look ridiculous as a, if I was out walking around in these um but yeah they're just a gorgeous pair of shoes I will look for this brand going forward and definitely a, a brand that I would note for orthopedic type shoes Next up is a two-piece bundle. Um, in it, we have both the Lululemon items. It's sold for $120. The first is a pair of Yours True high-waisted trouser pants in a size 10. And the second is a full day ahead button-up top in a size 10. So a really cute bundle, great deal. Retail value on these is like probably closer to $200. So yeah. And they're both reasonably newer items, I would say. I feel like my newer Lulu stuff does hold good value in the resale market. Uh, next up, we have another Lululemon full day ahead button up shirt. This was a blue and purple plaid size 12. This one sold for $46. I did find quite a few of these in like a two week span. So I got them all listed and they're kind of slowly selling off. Next is a handmade knit pullover sweater, fisherman style. Love this sweater. Like this is, ugh, this is everything I shop for. And size medium sold for $55. Absolutely love this piece and always looking for them. I don't find them that often. Like I definitely don't find one every day I go sourcing, but if I can find one a week, one every other day, uh, yeah. I will scoop them up. Some days actually I find a couple, but there's, I don't always find those ones. Uh, next is, and you might remember this item because I had it in a recent haul video and I was going to return the boots, but they're the pair of North Face Cameron tall leather boots, size nine. When I was going through the haul, I noticed that the zipper where the, um, I think it's like the water protection or the rubberization on the zipper that probably prevents moisture from getting in, looked kind of damaged and worn. Instead of returning them, I thought, you know what, I'm going to list these. The boots are still an excellent condition. I gave them a little bit of Doc, Doc Martin Wonder Balm to sprucen them up and they sold for $63. Uh, those boots were really cool. So no doubt that they were going to sell once I looked at them and I'm like, okay, I'm just going to fully disclose the zipper, took good pictures, wrote in description and uh, she was fine with it. So fantastic sale. Happy I didn't try and return those ones. And honestly, I think what stops me from returning items sometimes is finding the receipt because, and it's not like I have a whole slew of receipts, but I've probably been to the thrift store like five times and sometimes I split orders. So I could potentially have like eight to 10 receipts that I got to look through and try and, eh. sometimes I'm just like, no, I'm just going to list this and disclose <laughs> when it actually comes time to be having to return them. I am not a person that enjoys returning items. Uh, next up is a Lululemon Restless Pullover Pink Long Sleeve, size 10. This one sold for $42, so similar price to that other Swiftly Tech that I sold in this earlier in the video. I got to watch the cost of goods on those ones. 
Next is a Joseph Ribkoff floral long sleeve jacket, size eight. This I've had for months. Like I think I bought this back in early spring and it sold for $69, $69, that's so crazy. I've had some low ball offers at like 25 bucks for it. And I was like, no, like this is a really nice piece and it was in excellent condition. So $69, I'm very happy with that. I sat on it definitely longer than I wanted to but it was just kind of waiting for that right buyer. And I will continue to pick up substantial pieces from Joseph Ribkoff, but I'm looking for more pattern type stuff. Not, they have a lot of like black, everything is like black, which I understand, but I'm looking for those like really unique pieces if I'm gonna pick them up. Next is a pair of Lululemon Align crop leggings. These were in a size two, they sold for $50. That color does really well for me. I'm always looking for that dusty rose color. They are probably about five years old, but it's just a highly sought after color. Regardless of the size, they usually sell pretty quickly for me. Uh, next is a Lululemon and light bra. This has a zip up front. Uh, it was a 34E and it sold for $44. This one sold within like a day. I didn't even have time to cross list it over to my US closet. I didn't realize it was going to sell that quickly, but the value of this bra, like I think this bra sells for close to $100 on the Lululemon website. Next is a pair of Brown's thong strap sandals. These were like a slip on wedge style. They were in a size seven. They sold for $49. I'm so happy that I am listing things all year round now. Uh, I probably would have tucked these away for spring if this was a year or two ago, but now I am just listing everything, everything I find regardless of the season and trusting that it's going to find the right people. Happy I listed those. I'm so happy I'm doing this new model. If you are like sitting on the fence on what to do, should you stop listing things? Um, I would recommend doing what I'm doing right now, which is just listing everything you find regardless of the season. Obviously, if I have some really good fall winter pieces, I want to try and prioritize those right now to get them listed quicker. But I don't have a crazy death pile like my inventory ro rotates usually the max time i'll have inventory sitting here is two weeks unless i have items that maybe are damaged or need to be washed sometimes they'll be hanging up here and i see it when i'm prepping them but typically everything is rotating all the time i do not just keep things in a death pile anymore not what i'm doing i'm not a hoarder i am trying to get everything listed so that i can make money off of them and if i'm not excited to list them i'm not going to continue to source them because there's no point in me spending money in my business for it just to sit in the room here and if you need a pep talk that's your pep talk too <laughs> Hope it helps. All right, next up, we have a three-piece bundle, and this went to my girl, Kelly. You guys have heard of Kelly. Kelly, I know you're going to drop in the comments. I hope you love these pieces. They're all amazing. Um, they're all free people items. That is her jam. She loves free people. So do I. I absolutely love everything that you buy. It's just you pick the best pieces. First is a tunic square neck dress in a size extra small. I think I showed this one quite a while ago. It just took a little bit for me to get it listed with Thanksgiving. I was just there was like a two week period where I was struggling to get listings up. The second item is a green and cream colored striped tunic top as well. Um, this was a gorgeous piece, I love it. And then the other one was a point tell tunic sweater top in a size small. And this was a gorgeous sweater. I knew this sweater was gonna sell pretty quickly. And uh, yeah, the bundle sold for $170. Thank you, Kelly. I know you're gonna love all the pieces and uh, yeah, just great bundle. All right, we're getting down to the end here. Next is a vintage Royal Scott pullover cable knit sweater, size large. This one sold for $50. I love these earthy tone vintage sweaters. They seem to do pretty well for me. Definitely like that dad or grandpa style. Also gives me like coastal mountain girl, granola girl style as well. Okay, next up, we have a pair of Lululemon Dance Studio Pants, size 8. These sold for $62. I consider the Dance Studio Pants a huge bolo. They usually sell for over $60, whether it's in my Canadian or U.S. closet, and I am always hunting for them, hunting. 
Uh, next is a Tantrum Striped Tapestry Blazer. I have had this for like a year. I didn't even know I still had it. It sold for $40, so that's awesome. So excited to see that one going. I think I'm going to have to go through some of my inventory and make sure that everything is still active in my closet. I have some stuff that I should probably be clearing out. Um, some items that I've been sitting on for over a year and not because I'm like getting high dollar for them. I just need to clear them out of my inventory. All right, next we have a Lululemon scuba hoodie. This is a lightweight um, mustard yellow color. Love it. Size eight, sold for $43. A little bit lower than what I thought, but I did send out some aggressive offers. So she bit when I sent it out. I could have sat on it too for a little bit longer, but those scubas take up so much room in my inventory. Next is a pair of Everlane the cheeky jeans these were a size 31 they sold for 51 dollars. i originally sourced these for myself but i didn't like the cut of them they just weren't i probably could have gone one size smaller i think that's what it was uh next is a pair of ariat real denim marine jeans boot cut these were 31 tall they sold for 40 dollars a little bit lower than what I like to see my Ariat jeans sell for. But again, I sent out some aggressive offers and I was able to push a few sales on, on these days. Next, I have a vintage flashback quilted patchwork blazer jacket, like a bolero, uh, size medium, sold for $45. I have had this for like six months. And honestly, I thought this was going to sell so much quicker than it did. I can't believe it didn't. Like it's such a unique Southwestern boho type vest, but yeah, just waiting for the right buyer. I had lots of likes on it. Um, I've sent out a ton of offers on eBay for it, but just no one biting on it. Uh, this next item sold within an hour of listing, and it was an Arcteryx Pulse jacket, a zip-up, size large, sold for $80. This was an older style one. I think maybe it was in my last thrift haul video. Literally, it was up for an hour. She sent me an offer for $80, and I accepted. I was like, cool, I'll take it, because I think I only had it listed at $114, so that was a reasonable offer to me. Next, we have a pair of Babaton Command cropped mid-rise uh, faux leather pants. These were in a size 10. They sold for $70. I was questioning the tapered leg faux leather pants, but going onto the Aritzia website, I swear I saw this style of pants are still trending this year. That faux leather is still trending. So I'm going to keep trying to find them. I don't know if I'll pick up the Molinas. I think I might have two pairs of Molinas in my inventory right now, but yeah, for the right price, I'd grab them. I won't pay up for these styles anymore because they're, they're quite hit and miss and I could sit on them for, for a bit. Next is a Wilfred Nora cardigan crew neck sweater, size large. This sold for $67. This was a merino wool one. I listed it last night. I woke up this morning and it sold. So that's fantastic. Um, I knew it was going to sell pretty quickly. It was a fantastic piece. Next to new condition, gorgeous colors, very soft. So yeah, that's a that was a very quick sale. And this one I've had listed for a while, this Panasaur Gray Knit 100% Alpaca Sweater, size medium. This one sold for $48. I've had this listed since spring, but maybe it was listed just a little bit late for, you know, the winter season last year. But I love alpaca sweaters. Like if I find them and they're in good condition, they can't be all like pilled up. I will grab them because they just hold a really good value. They're really soft. Anyone that knows material content will wear alpaca. It is the softest. Like it's, it's to me, I don't want to say it's equivalent to cashmere because I feel like cashmere is a different type of softness, but alpaca, oh, just so nice. So nice. Uh, next is an Arcteryx Henley t-shirt. This was a long sleeve, size small. This sold for $46.00 pretty quick sale as well listed a couple of days the last sale on my Canadian closet then we're going to do the U.S. side and this is a pair of Ariat real and twined mid-rise boot cut 
jeans and this was a size 33 they sold for 64 dollars. what a difference like those other jeans sold for what was it 40 and these ones sell for 64 i think this is more realistic to where i would want to see my sales on area but i don't know some are good some aren't right some sometimes you just someone takes you up on that really good offer that you sent out but i'm i'm happy with this sale all right, let's skip over to my US closet. I just got to log out and then log back in. All right, uh, so again, we're gonna go over sales over $40 on the US side. First up is a pair of Lululemon 2021 ABC pants. These were in a size 32 leg. They were a size 36 and they sold for $50. I was expecting a little bit more for these ones, but I, yeah, I don't know. I, whatever, I'll take it. Anything over $50 for my men's Lulu, I'm happy with. Uh, next up, we have a Lululemon Breeze By Long Sleeve Squad T Running Activewear Black Top. Oh my gosh, size six. This one sold for $62. So this is a newer style Lululemon Long Sleeve. These hold good value. These are the ones that I'm seeing over $50 for the sales. And I think I need to prioritize these ones more. So again, I'll still pick up the Swiftly Techs, but they have to be for a good price. I will not pay more than $15 for a, a Swiftly Tech anymore. But these ones, I would probably pay 20, right? Pay 20, I it sold for 62. That's a pretty good profit margin for me. Next up is an, an a nine bing. Oh, why do I feel like anine? Anine bing? Is that what it is? Sierra pullover faux fur half zip sweater. This sold for $75, size medium. Uh, I thrifted this after work one day and I paid like 12 bucks for it. So that was a fantastic flip. I could have maybe got more money for it, but I was, I felt like I was already seeing a decent profit margin on it and I had had it listed for about a week. So I took that, put the money back in my business to buy more stuff. Uh, next is a pair of Lululemon Studio Pants. These were lined ones. So the lined ones are like a double layer, size four. They were a black grape in color, so really, really dark purple. And they sold for $66. My Studio Pants on the US side sell like so quickly. I list them and they're selling in less than a week for top dollar. Like I feel like this is a top dollar for this style of pants. Uh, next, we have a pair of Vionic Camilla bronze uh, sandals in a size 9. These sold for $40. Vionic, I feel like is hit and miss, but if I'm paying like 5 or $6 for the sandals, I'm going to pick them up. This was a decent return on them. I definitely will not be paying up for them. Like my buy, sell, trade stores, pricey's at like $30, so I won't be able to pick them up there, but if Value Village or Savers Club has them, I'll grab them for sure. Uh, these next ones are a pair of Justin cowboy boots. These were red in color. They're gorgeous, size nine. They sold for $84. I love that. I think I paid about $20, $17 or $20 for them. So that was a really good flip, sold within a week. Next, we have a pair of Lululemon Align pants. Um, these were in a size 12. They sold for $66. Uh, like I said, the leggings and the studio pants for me are just doing so well on my U.S. side. Uh, yeah, ah, I just love it. I love it because I have access to so much Lululemon. And when I sell these items on the U.S. side, I also get the exchange rate on my on my um, profits. And I just checked the Canadian dollar last night at work before I left. And it's at $1.38. I don't think I've ever seen it this high like ever as an adult. I never, I cannot remember it ever being this high. That's so bad for us going to the States or like buying in the States. Our buying power converted into USD is bad, but anything that I have USD coming into Canada, I'm getting really good return returns on right now. So I'm okay with it. It just means that I'm not going on any US holidays right now because I'm getting robbed in the exchange rate. All right, next up is a Frank and Oak Camp Collar Blouse. This was new a tag, size extra large, sold for $44. Uh, that was a Savers Club pickup, so great return on it. Uh, this is probably one of my first handmade knit. No, I think I sold a hand, 
handmade knit sweater a couple weeks ago on Posh US, but this would probably be my second one. And it was a Fair Isle Fisherman crew neck. Uh, the pattern was gorgeous. The colors were gorgeous. Size large, sold for $68. Uh, yeah, I'm going to get all of my sweaters listed over there. The only thing that really stinks about selling these big items on the U.S. side is that I have to get all these items across the border and I have to get them to my cross-border courier. So it does cost me sometimes 2 to $3 to get these to um, the U.S., but on a sale where I'm making quite a bit of money off of it, I feel like they're definitely worth it. Next up is a Lululemon perfectly oversized crew neck sweater and this was in pink lychee and it was a size extra large. I actually didn't know what number size it was so I just went with extra large based on the measurements and this one sold for $51. I received a lot of low offers on this item and I was really sticking to it. I was not going to accept anything less than $50 on my US closet and anything less than $60 on my Canadian closet because I pay up for these oversized crew necks so I do have to get a return on them. Um, but I've been sitting on this one for like over a month. I was just so surprised it took so long to sell because all the other ones sell so quickly. Uh, this next one is a pair of Rolla's Classic Straight Leg Light Wash Distressed Jeans, size 26. They sold for $47. Here is a wild story about these jeans. So they sold, order complete, she's happy with them. I get a message from her yesterday and she's like, I just wanted to say I love the jeans. I've been wearing them, but I felt something in the pocket and I reached into the pocket and there was a hundred dollar bill in it. So it's a Canadian $100 bill. She's like, can I mail this to you? I was like, I was at work and I was literally walking into the elevator to go downstairs and buy a diet Pepsi for my lunch. And I like walked in the elevator and I was like, <laughs> I just started laughing and like everyone looked at me. I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. So I thanked her. I said, if she wanted to, obviously, or not obviously, but yes, I would, I would love that. Um, so I did give her my address because the return address on the box is my cross-border courier address, right? So I had to give her my address and, um, she said she would mail it back to me in the next day or two. So like, what a kind soul. Like, I am so grateful for good people that do that. Um, yeah, that's awesome. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with the $100. I don't think I'm going to keep it for myself, but I think I am going to give it back somewhere else in my life. I'm going to spread the karma. It's going to be like my karma $100. The fact that she's sending them to me and, and it like, I'll be real. It's not my hundred dollars. It was obviously left in the pants when I sourced it. But I think that this is like my my spot to now take it and like spread it to other people. So I'm excited. I, I'll keep you guys posted in what I do. I might even just use it as pay it forwards. Like when I'm, you know, when you're at the drive through, pay for the person in front of me. When I'm at the coffee place, pay for the person in front of me and just spread spread like lots of little joy and I'll just leave the money in my car so I'll always use it to pay forward for people but I think that this money was meant to be given to other people. Next up is an Akemi and Kin. I think it's an anthropology brand um, and it's an open cardigan sweater oversized yellow and white gorgeous piece. I wish this was my size. It was a size small. Sold for $48. So that was such a cool find. I love that color. I love that color in fall too. Uh, next up, we have a pair of Justin Western cowboy boots. These were in like a beige color, nine and a half men's. They sold for $40. They were pretty beat up. Like when I grabbed them, now looking back, I think I probably would have left them. Um, they had some serious scuffing. And when I photographed them, I knew that this was going to have an impact on how much I got for them. Uh, if they hadn't been as damaged, I think I could have got over $60 for them, but very visibly scuffed up. All right, we are getting through these. Next up is a Kate Spade Wesley large red purse. Um, it was missing the long strap, but I knew that this would hold a good value. Also, it was such a gorgeous red color and it sold for $90. I don't normally find Kate Spade stuff. I don't normally pick it up either. But this purse, I just love the color. I knew if someone was looking for a nice, classic Kate Spade purse, 
this was going to be for them. So happy with that sale. Next up is a pair of Spanx Shape and Lift Distressed Pull-On Skinny Jeans. These were a size medium. They sold for $40. I feel like Spanx doesn't hold as good of a value on the U.S. side. I think it's just more readily available in the resale market. So if I can pick these up for less than $10, I will, but I won't pay up unless it's like a crop, wide leg, flare leg, like a really, really current trendy style. Otherwise, $10 is going to be the max that I spend on them. Uh, next sale is an Eddie Bauer micro, micro therm down filled hooded jacket. This was in a size small. It was bright green, sold for $60. I actually expected this item to sell on my Canadian closet. I didn't realize Eddie Bauer was as popular on the U.S. side. I think the downfilled like has a big factor in its selling, but yeah, that was a good sale. I'm happy with that one. Next, we have a Wilfred Free, a Wilfred Free the Ghana shirt jacket. This was a merino wool one, dark brown, size medium, sold for $78. I thought that this item was going to sell for more money, and I did pay $50 Canadian. But with it selling on the U.S. side, I did accept this offer. My net earnings are $60 and then converting that into Canadian dollars, my net earnings will be $84. So I made about $34 off of this item. Not too bad, like not what I wanted, but it was a pretty quick flip. And I think that plays into when I accept offers. Is this a quick flip? Am I making at minimum $20? Yes, okay, I should accept this offer and move on. Unless I feel like the jacket holds crazy value. I don't know if this one did. Uh, next, we have a Lululemon scuba hoodie. This was in a beautiful dark red color, size 12, sold for $54. I've talked about the scuba hoodies. I'm still grabbing them. They do well. Uh, we have a pair of Lululemon street to studio pants. These were in a size 8. They sold for $42. Uh, they also sold on my Canadian closet like three hours after, so I had to cancel the Canadian one because I did not deactivate it. I'm really struggling with that. Like, I want to add eBay into my plethora of platforms. I say plethora, but I really only sell on Posh Canada, Posh US. But I already struggle to deactivate listings between Canada and US, and then to add eBay into there, I'm just like, can I manage all of this in the time that I allot to my reselling business? I'm not sure. So... I want to say that I'm going to add eBay soon and I, yeah, I, I want to say I'm going to. So I got to play around with a little bit. All right, next up, we have a Lululemon Cover Your Tracks jacket, size eight. This one sold for $40. I was hoping to sell it for a little bit more, but it is what it is. I'm okay with it. We have a Lululemon Swiftly Tech long sleeve. Uh, this was a green colored one, size four. This one sold for $50. Definitely a newer style Swiftly Tech, and I think that's why it uh, did so well. Uh, next up, we have a pair of dance studio pants. These were 32 unlined inseam in a size 8 color black. Uh, they sold for $60, so another quick sale. These sold within a couple days of listing them. Oh, I promise we're getting close to the end here. <laughs> Next, we have a pair of Lululemon ABC Classic Fit pants in a size 36. These ones sold for $62. These were a really nice pair of pants, very substantial type material. So happy with that one. Uh, I also have a Lululemon Take Shape Bra Wireless Lightweight in a size 34C. This one sold for $40. I have to be really careful with these ones. I find this, this type of bra at my local thrift stores, they're usually charging about 20 bucks for them. So if I come across one that they like missed or they didn't price how they normally do, I usually scoop them up because um, they do sell pretty well. And the retail value on these, I think, is somewhere around like $85 to $90. Maybe not this one. Maybe this one's closer to $70. But they just have a really good value to them. And you don't find them out thrifting. Like, it's not a common practice to find these types of Lululemon bras. All right, we got a couple more. Next up is a Patagonia down sweater jacket, size extra large. This one sold for $149. I did have quite a few low offers, but I was sticking to my guns. It was pink, which is cool, and it was a size extra large. You don't find women's extra large Patagonia downfill jackets very often. So I knew that I kind of held a market on 
this jacket. And then the last sale from this week is a Free People Movement Hotshot Onesie Pullover Jumpsuit. I don't even know what to call it. In a size small and it sold for $60. So this was another quick flip listed less than a week. So yeah, fantastic sales. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to go over all these. We've been recording for over 40 minutes. That's crazy. But there are so many sales to go over and I hope these help you when you're outsourcing. Gives you some ideas what you should be looking for, what's selling um, for me on both platforms. And yeah, the US side, definitely my Lulu does really well over there. Okay, so we are looking at sales from October 5th to October 26th. It's 21 days, three weeks exactly. On Poshmark Canada, I had $2,583 in sales. And on my US closet, I had $2,009. And converting that into Canadian dollars with the exchange rate right now is $2,752. So in the same currency, I am making more money in my posh US closet. Um, eBay, zero sales, but I've said this before, I am no, I just haven't been watering the grass. I haven't cross-listed over to eBay in like two months, something I need to start doing. The grand total for both closets over the three week period was $5,335, which is about $254 a day in gross sales. That is up a couple bucks from, I think it's up like $5 from last video. So I am converting all payouts into Canadian funds just so I'm using one currency. Total gross sales, if I converted them all into USD, was $3,877. So still pretty good. Like I'm happy with that. Uh, I sold 90 items combined. The average sale price on my Canadian side was $51 an item. My average sale price on my US closet was $52 USD. I think that works out to like uh, five times four, 20. That's like, oh my gosh, that's like $70 Canadian per item. That's, that's really good. Yeah, I have a really good feeling about all of this. Like it's just, this is good. This is the type of numbers that I'm hoping to see. My top brands. So Lululemon is my best selling brand in both closets and like, double doubling the next brands um it's just my top selling brand i have good access to it so i source a lot of it it makes sense that it would be my best selling brand because i list so much of it uh on my canadian closet the next brand would be my free people but on my u.s closet after lululemon nothing else stands out like everything else is like i don't know in that hundred dollar mark so i might sell like two of each one but i don't see um, I don't see anything else in my U.S. closet ruling it the same way that Lululemon does. I have noticed my sales are starting to diversify a little bit more as I source different brands. And I think because I hit that benchmark of $40, I did have other sales in my U.S. closet. They just weren't hitting that $40 benchmark. So yeah, it's just learning, right? And building up my inventory right now. Trends for sales. So 88% of my sales in the US are an offer to like, and I'm gonna say it's very similar on my Canadian closet as well. I find this to be the most successful strategy that I'm using with my business model. I am priced to give a discount. I start my discount at 20%. That's what Posh Sidekick is set up to. And then 30% is now my max. So on the weekend, on Fridays and Sundays, I'm sending out bulk offers to likes through the Poshmark app, through their um, send offers to likes, I think, and you can do the bulk feature. 30% uh, is what I'm sending out. I find that sales are kind of picking up for me and I say kind of, but they really are starting to pick up. Um, and I just feel like this strategy is working for me right now. If at some point this strategy stops working, I will reevaluate and change how I'm pricing or how I'm discounting items. Fun fact time. I was just accepted into the promoted closet beta testing on Poshmark US. I'm going to give it a try. I have seen numbers and screenshots from a few sellers that I trust and have similar business models to me, and it has boosted their sales. They are seeing growth. Yes, they are paying some money, but they're seeing like, say they're paying whatever, we'll say $30 a week or $40 a week, but they're seeing like $800 more in sales. So for that, I would pay for it as well. 
I am still using the promoted listing feature through Posh Sidekick because why not? Um, I feel like it's a very affordable option for, I think it's like $14.99 monthly. And I do believe that also has a positive impact on my sales. So because my Canadian closet doesn't have the promoted closet feature through Poshmark, I will definitely be using the Posh Sidekick on that side to continue promoting my items. And if you have the feature and you're like, well, how do you make it work? I pick items, I usually will sort it by most likes and then I'll look through items that I think are like my best items. I I don't I don't want to say it equates to sales because it's hard to tell, but I will say it gives me max exposure. So people are seeing the items that are my best items. So then they're like, oh, what else does she have in her closet? And they come in my closet and they're able to find other items. I will pay to promote my listings going forward, like all the time. It's a no brainer to me now. But yeah, I just wanted to state I am using both. I'm excited. Obviously, I'll share my experience with you guys with promoted closet beta testing. Um, and I'm feeling optimistic for myself, but just more based on my business and my closet and the items I have. All right, sales goals for the next two weeks. This is my most favorite part of the video, actually. So I am going to be hitting my listing goals, 50 items a week, non-negotiable. Like I am telling myself, this is it. I need to do this. If I want to see the numbers that I know my business is capable of, that is my bottom line. I need to list 50 items a week. I listed 121 items in this three week period, which is about 10 items short every week. So I was listing about 40 items a week. I'm sitting at a 73% sell through rate. So I listed and this is a loose sell through rate. It's not based off of those 121 items listed. I'm just I know I listed 121 items and I sold 90. That puts me at a 73% loose sell through rate. I'm happy with that. That's similar to the numbers that I used to see before. I felt like maybe a year ago I was sitting around 80 to 85 percent, but 73 percent right now I will take. And I know right now if I want to increase my sales, I have to either increase my profit margins, source better, or list more. And right now I don't feel like I have the time to put in the research to increase that profit margin it's a little bit easier for me just to list the 50 items or 10 more items a week so at the 50 items listed every week I will be able to reach my sales goals and I can photograph an inventory about 15 to 20 items an hour that depends on if I have to find stock photos how hard they are to find stock photos for but um, all I'm doing is photographing, measuring, putting into an inventory bag and uploading for my VA, which I'm still using. So I do spend about five hours a week sourcing and I spend about three to four hours listing to get those 50 items. That's pretty good. Plus my ship time, plus YouTube, um, which I have not been doing very consistently lately. But we will chat. I have a lot of other things going on in my life right now that are taking up time. And I'm going to share them all with you guys really soon. So I'm, I'm excited to share some of the other things. So what I want to know is what are your sales goals for the next two weeks? I'm going to try and do another one of these videos in two weeks. What are you hoping to accomplish in your business in the next two weeks? Drop them down below. I'm going to cheer you on. We're all going to support each other in the comments and let's crush these goals. We're in the fourth quarter. Now is the time. Money is being spent right now. And I think it starts to taper off a little bit into December. So we got to make the most. If you have a death pile, go through it. List all your fall and winter items. List all your best items right now. Try and get those sales and that money flowing. Okay. On that note, this video is way longer than I thought it was going to be. So I'm going to head out of here. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend and that you have an awesome next two weeks. I am wishing you guys so many sales, lots and lots of sales. Let's make money in this fourth quarter and I will see you next time. Bye.